Hey folks, Felix here at Billet Labs, and I'm excited to announce that we have made our own CPU water blocks. So we have an Intel version and an AMD version. And what we've done here is essentially taken the bottom half of our monoblock and taken the same kind of aesthetic style and design language and applied that to what we hope is going to be a much more widely used product. Now, if you watched Steve at Gamers Nexus's review video of the monoblock, you might remember that we were slightly lacking in thermal performance on the CPU end. We were several degrees behind AlphaCool's Core 1 CPU water block, uh, as you can see from Steve's video. Billet's pre-production block with the denser fins ran at 57 degrees over ambient, with the production change that benefited GPU memory temperatures increasing the CPU temperatures in this particular load, moving it up 3 degrees. That's still cooler than the CLC, but the manufacturing trade-off had thermal considerations closest to the cores, which makes sense. That's where they changed the microfin. And to the best of our knowledge, there are two main reasons behind this. One is the performance of the fins, and the other is the contact with the CPU. Uh, the CPU contact thing has also been addressed by Steve in that same video. Pressure is low enough at the center that we'd be relying really heavily on pace to bridge that gap. There's high pressure at the top and bottom of the CPU. Remember that white doesn't mean zero contact, but definitely the pressure is way below what's desirable here. And this is poor contact. It's actually some of the worst we've seen for a CPU contact patch. So we've taken that feedback on board and we've done our absolute best over the last six months or so to try to overcome both of those issues and create a really good CPU water block. And the first thing we've put a lot of work into is the fin density. So our original prototype monoblock used 0.3 millimeter fins, but these were unmanufacturable at scale with our supply base at that time. So for the production run, we went for 0.5 millimeter fins. But working very closely with our machinist, we've managed to get that down to 0.25 millimeter fins. So these are the smallest fins we have ever made. They are still as deep as our previous fins were at 3.5 millimeters, but we've also reduced the thickness of the cold plate from five millimeters to four millimeters. So there's only half a millimeter of copper for the heat to travel through before it hits the water. So on the cooling fin side of things, that's pretty much as far as we can go right now. I think we've done everything we can. So now we need to look at the contact patch between the CPU cold plate and the CPU, which was our other major issue that we had. And in order to nail that down, we have actually produced three different cold plates. So we have a perfectly flat one, like we had before. We have one with a 3 meter radius, 3000 millimeter radius, and we have one with a 2000 millimeter radius. So this testing is going to involve testing all three of those on our block. The theory being that the flat cold plate will probably give the worst performance because the center of the CPU will sag inwards due to the pressure and there won't be good contact in the center of the CPU die. Whereas the curved ones will account for that deformation under pressure in the CPU die. It's just a case of which curve is the best curve to match the CPU. And we need something to test it against, so we've chosen the AlphaCool Core 1 CPU water block, which is the exact water block that Steve used that beat us by 7 degrees. And judging by this video from Der Bauer about a year ago, the AlphaCool Core 1 does seem to be the one to beat. I recently talked to Igor from Igor's lab and we were discussing one of his recent articles. Well, he didn't test it, but it was published on his website about the AlphaCool Core, I guess Core 1 block it's called. And in his test or in the test on his website, this block was delivering an amazing performance, like outstandingly good performance, mind blowing, better than expected. And then I was thinking about, I definitely also have to check this out. The AlphaCool Core 1 is performing the best with about 0.4 degrees Celsius lower temperature than the heat killer 4 Pro. So we're going to see how close we can get to that. Also, since we have one lying around, we're going to test this EK quantum magnitude block as well. And if you wanted to see the fin density of these three cold plates, here we have our cold plate on the left with our 0.25 millimeter fins. Then in the middle is the Alpha Cool Core 1, which looks like it has very similar fins to ours. And then on the right is the EK cold plate, which is uh, quite a lot bigger, coarser fins. So let's look at the construction of the block. So underneath the cold plate, you have this copper jet plate, and that is sealed against the central block by this O-ring. 
And then if we undo all these small screws, this central piece disattaches from the top plate. And you can see that the only thing that differentiates the AMD block from the Intel block is the top plate. So they share three of their four main components. So we're going to be testing these blocks on an AMD build and on an Intel build. Now the Alpha Cool Core 1 fits AMD and Intel. The EK that we have only fits Intel. So for the Intel test, we're going to have our three block variations against Alpha Cool and EK. And then on the AMD build, we're just going to have our three block variations against the Alpha Cool block. Now we do need to say up front that even though we're going to do everything we can to keep this test fair and accurate, we're not really set up particularly well to do accurate testing like this. We work in a very small room with large windows, with poor insulation, it's not climate controlled in any way. The only way we can maintain a similar temperature in the room is by opening the windows. This creates air currents, hot areas, cold areas of the room. It gets sunny, that can shine on various components, so we're, we're blocking out the sun as much as we can to keep it fair, but there is going to be some variation there. We're not using temperature probes or anything like that, we're relying on the CPU reporting its own temperatures. But the general testing method we're using is just blasting a load of heat out of the CPU just to get the water up to temperature, and then once the water temperature has peaked, we're running a Cinebench CPU test that is 10 minutes long, and we're measuring the average temperature of each core between the fifth and the ninth minute of that Cinebench test. We're then recording the Cinebench score, but most importantly, we're recording the average temperature of every single core between minutes five and nine of the Cinebench test. We are making sure to record the ambient temperature at the start and end of each test. And for each combination of water block, cold plate, and CPU, we're running two tests back to back. We're trying to do all the tests in a row just to minimize variables, but we did have to split this over two days. So there is, as we said, there is going to be some inaccuracies in our testing, but we've done everything we can to keep it as accurate as possible with the equipment, with the setup, with the space that we have to work in. And here's a quick tour of our rather messy test bench. So we've got our pump running off this car battery again, and that's just because we're going to be constantly needing to re-bleed the loop by taking everything apart all the time. So that's running at a constant 12 volt supply, so that's, eight, that's an 18 watt 4.2 DDC pump. We have this open reservoir, and we've marked on here where the water level is, and we're just continually topping that up throughout the day just to make sure that that stays the same, just to remove that as a variable. And then this is the Intel one we've got at the moment. So we've got our old uh, Z690i Strix motherboard. We've got a Cooler Master V850 power supply. We've got a 3090Ti uh, in an old EK water block that we just had in stock. Um, that's not really doing anything. That's just to complete the loop and have a way to uh, output to the screen. We have two 280 mil radiators. One is an Alpha Cool, looks like maybe 45 mil thick. 45 mil thick. And then we have this 55 mil thick uh, Hardware Labs Black Ice Nemesis, I think, radiator. And all the fans are Arctic P14, I believe, 140 mil fans. And we've just set them all to run full speed all the time. Again, just to remove that as a variable. Um, we've got our own DDC pump top on the pump. And uh, yeah, everything is just connected together with a random array of old fixings and old pipe that we had laying around. But it's doing the job well. So let's get into the results. And again, we used what we had in stock here. So we were testing on the AMD build. This was on a Ryzen 7600. So it's only a 65 watt chip. So it's nothing crazy powerful. But here you can see how our various uh, water block variations compared against the Alpha Cool Core 1. So the winner for us was definitely the flat cold plate here, but only marginally. The 3000mm cold plate was slightly worse performing, um, but it's all within margin of error, so it's, it's hard to know exactly. But what we do know is the 2000mm radius uh, cold plate was definitely worse, so that's definitely too sharp of a curve. But yeah, Alpha Cool has won here by uh, over two degrees on the maximum temperature. But the average temperature in the left column is really what we are basing our research on here. Uh, and there 
we only lost by 1.17 degrees, which we're pretty happy with, honestly. It's really given us um, the knowledge that that AMD doesn't really need too much curvature in the cold plate. Um, so we've got a lot of refining we can do there. So we were going to leave it there with AMD and accept the loss. However, we had a thermal right contact frame lying around and we thought we'd run all the tests again with that and see if there's any difference. And it turns out there was. And here we actually beat AlphaCool by nearly one degree. Again, it's all within margin of error, so we're not considering this a win or a loss, but we're pretty much in the same ballpark as the Alpha Cool Core 1, which we are really, really happy about. And on to Intel. Now, this was on a 12900KS, so way more powerful than the AMD chip we were testing. And here we can see that Intel definitely needs curvature in the cold plate. Obviously, Alpha Cool has won here, and our flat cold plate water block performs about 10 degrees worse than Alpha Cool, which is pretty much exactly what Steve showed in his uh, video. So that made us think our testing is definitely useful, but it's clear that the 3000 millimeter radius cold plate was the winner on our block here. EK, a couple of degrees behind us. Alpha Cool, what's that? 1.18 degrees ahead of us. So yeah, AlphaCool definitely know their stuff. They know how to make a very good CPU water block. But we are not far behind them. We then, just like on the AMD build, installed a thermal right contact frame. But at this moment, I dropped a screw on the motherboard and bricked it. So uh, the testing had to end there. And we actually never got any results with the thermal right contact frame. So we will do that in a future video. And yeah, it was very frustrating because uh, we thought maybe with that contact frame we might end up uh, a bit closer to Alpha Cool, but we don't know. And just in case any of you wanted to see our raw data, here it is. Feel free to pause and have a look through. So what conclusions can we draw from these tests? Firstly, we're basically neck and neck with Alpha Cool on the AMD block, so that's great news. I don't think there's really any more development we need to do on that. If we look at the contact patches though on the Intel blocks, so obviously this isn't entirely scientific compared to the testing that Gamers Nexus can do with their pressure tests and everything like that. Um, but if we look at the thermal paste patterns on the CPU, AlphaCool clearly have a very good contact patch here. They're covering almost all of the CPU really well. And then if we look at the EK contact patch, it's also pretty good. So I'm pretty certain that they lose to AlphaCool and to us because of their fairly coarse uh, fin design. Then if you look at our contact patch, you can see most of the pressure is towards the center. So I think there is a small amount of improvement we can do there. I think we just need to smooth it down very slightly more. I think the radius that we've got is not perfect for Intel and we want to make it perfect so that we can catch up with uh, the temperatures of the Alpha Cool block. But yeah, we'll do that in a future video. So thank you so much for watching this rather nerdy CPU water block test. And uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to hopefully making some further improvements to this Intel block. And uh, our aim is to make the best performing water block in the world. Whether we can do that with this one is yet to be seen, but one day we'll get there. See you next time.